Hello. Welcome back to the Lanterns Oil Prayer Fellowship, where we are learning and exploring and gleaning wisdom from truths about heaven's court and how you can be blessed, your life can be changed, even your family bloodline can be impacted in heaven's court. Tonight we want to talk about covenants. We want to talk about how covenants, when they're broken, it brings curses. But covenants can be restored. That's good news because when covenants are restored, the blessings are restored as well. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you that you are a covenant-keeping God. Daniel and Nehemiah, in their prayers, they called you the God who keeps covenant and mercy. So we thank you that you just see something of a treasure in us that you desire to have covenant with us because you love us. And we just ask you to illuminate to us tonight the true value of covenants in our lives. And this we ask in Jesus' name, under the blood atonement, amen and amen. Tonight we want to talk about different types of covenants. There are four prominent types of covenants that we purpose we that we personally may encounter in our lives. Blood covenants, seed covenants, salt covenants, word and meal covenants. These type of covenants you will find throughout the Bible, throughout history. And the most important, prominent blood covenant is the new covenant of the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is the strongest binding covenant of power over all of heaven and earth to save, heal, deliver, set free, reconcile, restore, cancel debts, pay debts, resurrect the dead to life. It is the power to save and sanctify or cleanse our lives for the glory of God. Now the enemy knows the power of blood in covenant. And the enemy uses blood himself to make ritual covenants, murder covenants, bloody sports covenants, tattoo covenants, cutting covenants to name a few now circumcision was a cutting covenant with the lord beginning with abraham it was a righteous covenant with god and was a sign marking the man child for god's ownership along with giving the child his birth name. The Hebrew community circumcises male babies on the eighth day of life. And they officially announce the name of the child at that time. Symbolically, it seems that they circumcise the name into the child. Our name reveals our character and speaks 
of our destiny. Our given birth name is very important. Sometimes we may experience that the meaning of our name did not really speak a good destiny for us. And it could be that our parents, when they named us, or whomever named us, did not really realize what they were doing. They did not realize the value of a name. So if you feel that your name or the meaning of your name really didn't speak a good destiny for you, then first of all, just repent for your parents or whomever named you. Repent that they did not value or understand the meaning of a name upon a life. Forgive them. And then ask God to give you a new name that points you to your destiny. The Lord God will honor your request because he wrote your destiny and he is for you and he desires that you fulfill your destiny. He's the author and finisher of your life. Your destiny is written by him in heaven. So as we talk about all these different types of covenants, just remember that Jesus's covenant of blood is above all other covenants. It supersedes all other covenants. Now let's talk about seed covenants. Seed covenants are about sexual seed. Seed covenants include illegitimate seed, seed that's been brought forth outside of marriage, or seed that's been brought forth through any other sexual activities that are not in line with the plan of God. There is a scripture about illegitimacy. One of illegitimate, it's Deuteronomy 23, verse 2. Deuteronomy 23, verse 2. And it says, One of illegitimate birth shall not enter the assembly of the Lord, even to the tenth generation. None of his descendants shall enter the assembly of the Lord. Now, we just spoke in the previous teaching about repentance and how God is faithful and just to forgive and cleanse of sin. So illegitimate seed, it can be repented of and God is faithful and just to forgive and cleanse all of that out of the bloodline and there will be no more mark of illegitimacy anymore. It will be paid for and gone in Jesus' name. Isn't Jesus wonderful? Another type of covenant, salt covenants. This is a scripture about salt covenant. Numbers chapter 18, verse 19, it says, all the heave offerings of the holy things which the children of Israel offer to the Lord, I have given to you and your sons and daughters with you as an ordinance forever. It is a covenant of salt forever before the Lord with you and your descendants with you. 
this salt covenant is a priesthood covenant. This is a salt covenant between God with the priests. When you think of salt, salt really is a purifying element. So a salt covenant is a covenant that is made with God where he purifies those who will represent the people before God. So he purifies the priesthood so that they may represent the people before God. That was Numbers 18, verse 19. Another scripture is Second Chronicles 13, verse 5 about the salt covenant. Should you not know that the Lord God of Israel gave the dominion over Israel to David forever, to him and his sons, by a covenant of salt? So this is a salt covenant with kings. Why would God need a salt covenant with kings? Because kings represented the nation before God. So that purifying element cleansed the king to represent the entire nation before God. National leaders are very significant in representing us before God. Here is another verse about a salt covenant. It's from Matthew 5, verse 13. You are the salt of the earth. But if that salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by me. This is a salt covenant of God with the believers of the earth. God purifies us to represent him on the earth. We are his believers. And we have a salt covenant with God to represent him purely on the earth. Pure representation of God. That's a challenge. That's why we have heaven's court. There's also Another type of covenant, a word and meal covenant. These are covenants of word agreements over a meal. In Exodus 24, verses 9 through 11, God entered into a covenant with the elders of Israel. And you can look at that verse to see how there were words of agreement and a meal. Think about how the serpent took Eve out of covenant with God. The serpent deceived Eve to what? Agree with the serpent, with his deception about God, how he denied, you shall not surely die he denied the truth of God, and Eve agreed with that. So that became the word agreement, and then she ate of the tree she was told not to eat of. In John chapter 6, verses 53 and 54, 
this is communion. Communion is a meal and word covenant with the Lord. <laughs> now, in the Bible, there is something very interesting. It's an example of a word covenant curse. But that word covenant curse was overturned by a salt covenant. So the salt purified and cleansed it. It cleansed out the curse. In Joshua 6, 26, the word was spoken. The word covenant curse was spoken. And manifested to fulfillment in 1 Kings 16, verse 34, where the curse actually seemed to be in effect at that time. However, generations later, in Elisha's day, the prophet Elisha's day, Elisha actually overturned that curse with a salt covenant. And you can see this in 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 19 through 22. When you enter into covenants with the devil, as we talked about before that he knows about, you know, blood covenants and, and how he had word. He knows covenants. The devil knows covenants. When you find that there may have been a covenant made with the devil, that you want to pray and you want to ask God to annul any covenants with the devil. If you think that there was some kind of trade or deal made with the devil, you want God to cancel that deal to revoke it and make it null and void. If anything you believe was dedicated to the devil, you want to actually cancel, annul and revoke that dedication and then rededicate it to the Lord God Almighty. These are things that will actually release us from the devil's grip in heaven's court. When we repent of any trades, deals, covenants, dedications, that were made with the devil, it will actually break the devil's grip on us, on our bloodline. In the Bible, by faith, We are actually parts of covenants. You know, Adam, Adam was, he had a covenant with God. God had a plan with him. You know, he was a farmer and he was a zoologist and he 
named all the animals and took care of the garden. And we see that in us today, that we really, we love to have our pets and we love to go learn about animals and we like to have gardens and vegetation. And that's all part of Adam in us. Noah had a covenant with God. The rainbow, God made a sign to, at, to Noah saying, no more Noah will I destroy flesh by flooding the entire earth. Abraham, we have a, we have, we are part of Abraham's covenant with God. And what is that? That he would have descendants more than the stars in the sky and the sands on the, the beach, the sands on the desert, because he is really our father by faith. Anyone who walks in faith in the almighty God is a child of Abraham. That faith of Abraham is in us. Moses had a covenant with God, a covenant of giving the law so that we would know the holiness of God, the righteousness of God. So we are joined to that covenant. Those laws are in us. They're in us, they're in our conscience. And we know, and we feel when we're breaking those laws, we can feel it. We might run from it, but we can feel it because we're part of the Mosaic Covenant. David had a covenant with God. That covenant is David. You shall always have a son on your throne. Israel and even though David had many generations of sons and they really fell out of the plan of God there is one son of David who upheld everything obediently to God, the King of glory. He's the one who shall be the son of David on a throne forever over Israel and over all of the family of God. And his name is Jesus. And the new covenant those who believe that Jesus bared so much agony in our place. He took our death so that we could have peace and live our life to glorify him and to bless others. That's the new covenant. Those are the biblical covenants. And all of those types of covenants we studied, blood covenant, seed covenant, salt covenant, word and meal covenant, they're all intertwined in establishing those covenants. So, Go before God if you have broken covenants, broken godly covenants. 
broken godly vows. Repent and ask God, please, if, if there be any way to restore this covenant, may it be so. Otherwise, repent and ask God to cleanse you and your bloodline of the curses that came with a broken covenant that you may be free of that devil's grip. And if there be any covenants that were actually made with a devil, ask God to take his ax to that covenant, to break it, to annul it, to revoke it, and to make it to be nothing covered under the blood of Jesus, that you will be free of the devil's grip. This is God's authority in heaven's court. He is the righteous judge. I pray that these teachings have truly been a treasure to your life that they will bring you some kind of freedom that you could never have imagined, that they would shift your life out of darkness into the marvelous light, that they will bring a resurrection to the roots of your very family tree and every generation, that you will walk in fulfillment of your destiny. You will overcome the things the temptations, the iniquities, the sins, those things that have been hindering you from fulfilling your life destiny, from glorifying God. May you be a blessing to many because you got involved in heaven's court. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for this time has been sweet in your presence. This time has been sweet in glorifying Jesus. This time has been sweet in the hovering presence of Holy Spirit. And now may those who have been sharing in these teachings, may they go forth. May they go before you in heaven's court knowing that you are cheering them on to repentance, to freedom from the devil's grip, freedom from the curses, that a flood of blessings will be released into their lives, into their generations because of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen and amen. Thank you very much for joining me. I wish you a wonderful, wonderful season in the Lord. Bye-bye.